Hello, everyone. Welcome to day seven of the World Pranic Festival. We're um, recording this live here in the Eden Pranic Center in Kokore, Italy. And it's been an amazing um, journey of uh, discovery. We've had so much fun here, those of us gathered on the land. And I can't believe that we're already halfway through the festival. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to welcome um, someone that is beloved to us all. I, I don't hesitate to say that. Um, and um, I'm just first going to though do a few reminders for those of you who are joining us online. You can record your questions for Jasmine in the um, Q&A section at the bottom of your screen. And we will do our best to get to those uh, at the end of the presentation. And also for those of you who want to listen in your native language, we're broadcasting in several different languages. You can click the world symbol at the bottom of the screen and choose which language you prefer to listen in. And again, a reminder for our um, presenter to please speak slowly. I'm trying to emulate the speed right now with some pauses occasionally, and this helps our translators as well. So everyone, thank you for joining us. Um, she's called the grandmother of breatharianism. I think she's just an angelic presence. Um, I've been inspired by her um, on my journey, as I know many of you have been as well. She's just a wealth of information, love, joy, and beauty. And she's going to beam all of that to us today. Uh, welcome, Jez Maheen. <laughs> For Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I know we have to speak very slow because we have four or five different translators with different languages, which is wonderful. You can offer that service. You know, I was looking at the YouTube breatharian world and I noticed so many speakers have been with you for right from the beginning for me anyway. And it's a pleasure. I think this is my seventh year with you <laughs> beaming in. And it really is this beaming in. I was just meditating before to see, to just feel what's appropriate to add, because I know that so many people have been sharing so much over all these years. If it is your first time here, you can go back to YouTube channel and watch everyone's presentations. They're all there freely. And for me, celebrating at the end of this year, 30 years for me, 30 years. It's like, what a journey. And I've learned so much. And the learning never ends. There is so much, so many layers upon layers upon layers of self-discovery. And at the end, it's the re-experiencing of our multi-dimensional nature. You know, when we look at the stages of source feeding, and I want to honor, before we do that, Wiley Brooks. I saw a beautiful little video of him just before he left his body. And Wiley and I had a few meetings physically. We spent a bit of time together in America. And I said, where did this term breatharian come from? And he said, 
It means breather of God. He went to the mountain, was in a high chi field, really potent mother nature chi field. And like all the Qigong masters have been doing for thousands of years, he was so energized by the electromagnetic frequency of the, of the earth that he just lost his hunger. I asked if he could maintain that when he came back into busy city life. And he said, sometimes, not always. And so Wiley, like Hira Ratan Manik and others who've been out of the high chi fields, sometimes they supplement with a little bit of physical food. Did that mean that they were frauds or liars? No. It just meant that the chi source they were drawing from was not always of the voltage and the purity that they needed. What was so interesting with solar gazing, for example, is all this energy coming in from the universal core, from the galactic core, through the sun that we take directly into our eyes when we do solar gazing to then just really flood the body with this pure energy to the degree that people lose hunger. So here we have three types of chi, mother nature chi, where you are totally immersed in now in your beautiful Eden sanctuary in Italy. We have that beautiful electromagnetic pulse that you feel when you sit in silent stillness in a high chi mother nature field. But what about when you're in the city? That's different. Then you have this solar chi that you take in through your eyes that you could call cosmic chi. When you sit under a star-filled night where many of you are doing that, maybe around campfires, maybe singing where you are, maybe just being in your heart and being open, and you're picking up another influx of energy of cosmic chi. But what I love is essence chi. So before we share a little bit more about that, I just want to share some of these stages because I know there's kind of like two types of people gathering, two types I often meet in my journey, the curious, and then the pre-encoded. The pre-encoded are those who loaded up their body of light to make sure that they received everything they needed to physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually be an example of somebody who is being source-fed. I don't use Wiley's term of breatharian. I like the word in there, fed, because people think breatharians are just breathers. They're not being nourished. When we think about source feeding and essence chi, we are being nourished in a very, very different way. But firstly, we have the curious, the pre-encoded initial stages. That is, when maybe you're exposed to this reality, you hear a little bit about it, and it's like, yes or no. Some people go, no, 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 absolutely impossible. And so they won't go to the next stage. Others are a bit curious, and they say, well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. So they go into the next level, the next stage, and that is, okay, who is doing this? 
in the world and how are they doing it? They begin the research. I didn't go through any of this. I just clicked in in 1993. My journey was different. Then when they do good research, they find there's a shift in awareness through exposure to research. Maybe they've watched a lot of YouTube videos, maybe gone to gatherings like this, and there are some people they connect with, and there are some people they don't connect with. However, they then go into stage four, and this is the experiential research time and the whole long game of revelation. Maybe they do some sort of process. Maybe you've already done that. Maybe some of you have been with me and you've done dark room. Maybe you've done something with Nicholas or many other people with the, the systems that they're offering in the world, maybe your energy matched really well and you went deep into an, a great experience for you. Maybe you're already close to the frequency and you clicked in and maybe you had a beautiful month or six months or a year or maybe 10 years and then maybe your pattern of energy changed again and you experience something else, but eventually through your playing, your fine tuning, your awareness that how you choose to spend your time will determine how this beautiful quantum field will respond to you, the unified field. But more than that, it will take you into an experience as I went into, of being clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, things people have been sharing about, where your own inner guidance is giving you exercises. It's to just appreciate, appreciate, appreciate the sun when it came after major rain, appreciate my husband everything he is and does appreciate my children something to my heart it amped up the voltage of another virtue when we can spend all our time in appreciation it means we unhook from the energy of judgment and when we're free from the energy of comparison and judgment or wanting to find fault with things or even people, it's like this other revelation can come. This other level in our body of light can be revealed, reveal something more again. Once I had spent my year in that energy of appreciation, the guidance came. Okay, Jasmine, now we want you to focus on the deepest currents of the purest pulsation of love. That's all. Just focus only on opening to be flooded by, to be immersed in the deepest currents of the purest vibration of love. What I found in that journey was one, it was never ending. When I check now, it needs to be something else for me to focus on. It's like, no, 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 no. Still go in to the experience to open to the deepest currents of the purest vibration of love. For example, when we breathe, you can sit here and you can breathe because you're in Italy in the countryside. You can breathe pure Mother Nature Chi oxygen. You can go beyond that 
and breathe cosmic chi. You can go beyond that and you can have a very clear intention that as you breathe, you are not just breathing oxygen, but you are drawing from the very baseline of creation, drinking off the purest love. All of this does something absolutely amazing to your body system. As I went in to explore, the vibration of pure love. Over time, it shifted because revelation from experiential research will eventually lead you into locking in to something, locking in to source energy, and then getting the gift of freedom. From there, we go through the next stage. I've been so sad for 30 years. Yeah. People say, oh, what's Jasmine actually eating? Does she drink? Does she do this? It's like, oh, I don't even think of that stuff. When you're locked in and you're really free and you have all this experiential history of this freedom, when you are being fed physically from source, when you are being fed emotionally from source, we feed from the zone of virtue. By focusing on pure love, in that pure love zone, there's just virtues. There's endless bliss. There's endless joy. There's a vibration of the purest compassion for self and for all life. There is no way we could even think to harm another, especially not the animal kingdom. And then the plant kingdom too becomes so precious. It's like everything is so vibrant and alive. So you then have this discovery of peace within peace, within peace, within peace, within peace. You have the discovery in the zone of virtues of all the different flavors of love, of romantic love, of unconditional love, which is my favorite. You have so much in the vibrational structure in the zone of virtue of love so that here is your key to unhooking from your emotional dependency on physical food. You have to feed yourself emotionally with something purer. But all of these stages are like normal, you know, from the curious to the trying different methodology to eventually the revelation that you have the perfect guide within you that will bring you into certain levels of exploration that are just right for you. And the certain levels of exploration are designed to unlock all that you carry in your body of light. So then from there, you're going through this freedom, you've locked into that, and then the next phase is you become totally mesmerized by the unity zone. The mesmerization, you know, it's like, what? It's like, show me evidence of unity consciousness in this world. And the unified field shifts and goes, oh, this master wants to see evidence of unity consciousness. You realize the duality hologram is just a hologram. Brush it aside. Your vibration brushes it aside. Your vibration ends up dissolving all the veils of illusion, especially when you claim the truth of who you are. I am pure love. I am infinite. I am eternal. 
And what that does is it takes you into the most joyous experience of the next level of your multi-dimensional nature. Look at this. What feeds you? What really is essence chi about? Going, as I've done, and ask to experience the vibrational construct of the 99.9999999% space that's in your atoms. Ask to experience the vibrational construct of the unexpressed DNA called junk DNA, but not just the vibration, 99.9% space, with tiny, tiny solid matter. So we have 99.9% .9 space in the atoms. It's a frequency field. It's what we call the essence ocean, pulsating through us, washing through us. That's chi. That's essence chi. That's how we feed. It's a wash through. And once you get aware of that, it never stops. You're always source fed. Okay, now and then you might go in and out of taking physical food now and then for emotional body reasons or just because it's fun. But it doesn't matter because you have this experiential awareness of what is washing through you. But let's go beyond that. What if you ask to experience the very baseline of that 99% space, 99.999, the baseline, three energies. First, pure love. So what if you just go into this? I'm just gonna focus from here on in on experiencing the deepest currents of the purest love as I've been doing for a long, long, long time. It requires silence. It requires stillness. It requires consciously disengaging from the dual natured world. And it's so addictive. From that pulsation of pure love that's vibrating through us all, comes a sacred geometric patterning of light. And it carries wisdom. It carries all the wisdom in one of us need to fulfill what we were born to do. The light beings that I connect with, the multidimensionals who don't have physical form, they talk about six words, six words. They keep their spiritual reality very simple. They say, extension, you have extended as a ray of light from the unified realms. You made the decision to descend into physical form, to play in physical form for a while. Your life purpose in physical form is to give and receive, to give gifts and receive gifts. Those gifts are always virtues. You extend, you descend, you give gifts and you receive gifts. And then comes the next one, ascension and extraction. Ah, ascension is the up-leveling of your complete system with vital life force energy. So source feeding in my reality is about ascension. It's about a triple level ascension program. Extend as a ray of light descend into form, exchange gifts over maybe thousand embodiments, maybe less. 
eventually all the gifts you've had to exchange, come to exchange, to receive, to give, you are done. You are level into a stronger pulsation of purer light. And then you extract, you self-extract. Wiley Brooks self-extracted in 2016. Pralad Yani self-extracted. You call it death. We call it a conscious self-extraction. Here are Rat and Mani self-extracted. Now these are names in the pranic source feeding field that go back a long time in the West. I will self-extract. Not too far away. I still have some things I'm attending to on earth. Now that means when I'm gone, because I've gone on to another job and I know what that job is and I know when my extraction will be, you guys will be there. You guys will continue on. You'll continue to gather and you'll continue to share your experiences. But let's have a little look at something before we open to questions. There you go. This is how we source feed. Source feeding isn't stopping from taking physical food and hoping for the best. <laughs> source feeding is recognizing the magnificence of the human design. Look at these matrices. This is part of your light body. You can see perhaps you in the center as a meditator unhooking from the dual natured world. You have this torus that is constantly attracting the frequencies you need to fulfill what you chose would be your gifts at this time. Right now, there's a massive movement in our world. And that movement is towards being vegan. That's lovely. Vegetarianism, that's the old, the step before that. Right now, it's like vegan, vegan, this is good for you. It's good for climate change. It's good for our bodies. It's good for the animals. We're not at that point where source feeding is the most popular pattern of energy yet because we still need some good education. And that is guaranteed formula to lock in as to the how to do this. The first thing for the how to do this is to understand the magnificence of the human design. This is what feeds us, these matrices. If you have a look, the bigger matrice on the outer circle, that is the vibrational pattern of the multiversal beings who live deep in unity consciousness. It's above us and it's below us. The more pinker one in the middle, that is what we call the matrix for those who live deep in unity in our universe, all our galactic family and friends. You have below us the pink one, and we call that the Shambhala matrix. The Shambhala matrix is what is stimulating all the changes on Earth right now. We are hardwired into this with also our own personal matrices. And we load up, as we said, into our light body, everything we need to deliver our gifts on earth. So I would say you are pre-encoded to demonstrate this, even though some of you here are just curious. Well, for the curious, this is our hardwiring. We're not feeding from Mother Nature. We're not feeding from cosmic chi. We're not feeding from solar 
gazing, we are feeding naturally from the hard wiring that we are all through our body of light plugged into. Let me see if there's another little image that you may enjoy. Here it is there on a bigger level. You will see that, or you may not have seen, but one of the things we show to people when we gather is your personal matrice above you that's connected into your crown chakra. And everybody's is so unique. It's all made of sacred geometric patterns and you receive into your body everything you need from those that mandala the same mandala is in the crown and the same mandala is in the base and your body draws it your light body your chakra system they draw this energy up and down through the crown and then it vibrates out through your heart all of this gift giving this silent transmissioning that's why you can feel when you're in the presence of someone like Victor, who just sits there and la 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 radiates his beautiful energy. He's very much into silent transmissioning. And many of us are just very interested in being still, being silent, because we know that what we carry at our core is transmissioning through us, nourishing and transmissioning out into the world. So we don't want to share too much because I know that you have some question and answers. But what I love, where I'm at after 30 years for me, is absolute awe excitement, gratitude. I'm just feel like I'm just beginning. It's not this game that is so interesting. What is so interesting is when you amp up the voltage of the baseline of creation through your bio system, when that pulse of love, when that essence energy becomes purer and stronger, it's like revelation after revelation after revelation after, oh my God, no idea that a human construct could experience this. S A in town. But you need to play it in a way that keeps your system strong. See, there's no rush. This is a journey of joyous revelation. It's not a journey of struggle. It's not a journey of denial. It's not a journey of comparison of oh, this one's doing this and I can't do that or oh, let it go. Just come back to just step by step by step. Show me the magnificence. This is your coding. Show me the magnificence of this human design. Show me what I'm really, really capable of. Align this human system to that self-sustaining, self-regenerating template in my body of light because it's a frequency zone. Your personal keynote, keynote, as you keep fine tuning, even with just the I am, pure love, I am infinite, I am eternal, these codes allow that part of you to rise and fertilize the blossoming of different zones in your body of light until you come into what I call the full revelation of the freedom matrix you carry. True freedom. And that means no more limitations, no more hungers, no more mental hunger, no more emotional hunger. Because you've aligned emotionally to the zone of virtues, you've aligned mentally to that mind of supreme intelligence that vibrates through all of creation. 
to become free, become good. It's a game that's worthy of us, never ending exploration. So, is there anyone who would like to ask something? Wow, thank you so much, Jez Maheen, for your joy and your, your vibrant expression. We're all bathing in it right now here. I know that you can really only see my face on the screen at this mm -hmm. moment, but you can, I'm sure you already are picturing the many that are gathered under the trees here and the many that are online with us right now. So we, are, um, we do have a few questions for you. Um, the first one would be, I know that you have spoken about your year of gratitude, um, appreciation, and you're speaking about um, um, moving into the light body. Is there any other practice that you would recommend to, um, along with the pranic journey, to expand into that light body? Yeah, you know, it, it's about strengthening through focus. We all know the universal law of resonance. And the, the universal law of resonance says, whatever you give your energy to, you will become. So you give all your energy to the duality hologram and you're up and down and all over the place with that. If you give your energy to now moment awareness, and I really like a mantra that Mother Mary gave me a long time ago. I'll see if I can find it in the slide and talk you through it because I've been working with this a lot more lately. No, that's not it. That's our feeding stages. Here we go. All right. So this is about the vitalization of the human system. And you can see in the image, I have a meditating girl and she's in her yoga gear sitting there meditating. And then she has a much bigger version of her that's very light, her more divine self. And so when we want to pump up the volume of our pure nature so that it dominates the system because source feeding is about dominance. Which energy is dominating your biosystem? Is your human self dominating or is your essence nature dominant in its expression? Now, remember, essence is just I am pure love. I am infinite, I am eternal. That's our multidimensional self, the fact of what we are at core. So Mother Mary, one of the beautiful ascended ones, a long time ago, she added a difference to the I am that I am, which is an ancient esoteric mantra of claiming I am that I am. And she just said, what if you just on the inhale, you just go, I. And in the I, you recognize the divine I in the fabric of creation, which really is just love. Okay. The isness, the very foundation frequency that brought all of creation into life. Now, remember, if this is an energy, that can birth universes, create all creation, and it's vibrating through the 99.9% .9 space of us, then why can't it give us breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Because it's there, and it's the dominant part of us. The human part is very small. So on the uh, in-breath, it's like I, and on the out-breath, just am, and you relax. And it's like on the out-breath, am it is i am human and that's okay people reject their humanity especially in the spiritual path and it's like stop rejecting anything about you just flip the focus the i am is i am human yay love it and oh my water bottle sorry i am human and i am divine I am. 
So in the simple mantra, it's the mantra of acceptance and the mantra of relaxation. Source feeding is not attaining, striving. It's about relaxing back into something that's already there. This energetic construct. Now have a look at this frequency, this rotating pattern of energy behind the meditators. We call this your ascension cloak. What's encoded into this matrix is every single experience you've ever had since you first felt separate from source. If you look in linear time, you'll see an energy trail behind you of all your different embodiments on planet and off planet. And in every one of those different forms that your essence was expressing in, you were given training, you picked up gifts, you gave gifts, you gained wisdom, you gained virtues, you gained training right back through Atlantis and beyond, maybe Lemuria, Atlantis, Egypt, other periods of time. That's all hooked into you. That's all vibrating through your cellular structure. It's your ascension cloak. Now let's go off planet. In your ascension cloak, in this energetic matrix that is behind you in linear time, what about off planet? How much experience before you took form into Earth did you have in star systems in the unified realm where source feeding was a given? There was no production of food. You already have within you all the knowledge and all the experience to complete a circle in this now moment to come back to re-experiencing something you already know so well. Because the fact that we are 99.999999% multidimensionals and point very little human solid matter at all. But we've bought into a paradigm that says you have to feed the human construct from something outside of yourself, which is just part of the dual natured hologram education system to keep humans limited. So that's a simple one. So I, I, the I that I am, the divine I that I am, the multidimensional I that I am, the human I that I am, I accept and love it all. I love my humanity. Yes, I have human wounds. It's impossible wounds from being human, especially when we've had the amnesia as to our pure, true, multidimensional nature. But as you drop into it, I am, I am human, I am divine, and drop back. And lifestyle, which we share, you know, we have many courses on our jasminehint.com website and find our Purdy platform just to reinforce different things. And all of it is about the revitalization of the human construct with pure energy so we can become free from what people call unnormal ways of being, which to me are just limited ways of being. But you know what? To really answer your question, I just go back into I'm ready and open to really experience the magnificence of this multi-dimensional human design. And let me experience all the gifts that I carry in my body of light in the right way and the right time for me. And let all of this revelation happen with the frequency of joy and ease and grace. I ask that all that I am and all that I transmit 
is a nourishing frequency for all sentient life through all realms. Does your heart spontaneously just go, yes, yes, yes? Make this my experiential truth. Lock it in. I'm ready. Thank you so much, Jasmine. I can see all of us here beaming, radiating, and really absorbing all of what you're saying. That gratitude, appreciation, relaxing into that human presence, that human multidimensional experience. Thank you so much for beaming that to us. I'm going to pass over to Fabio. If there are any questions from the live audience here, at Eden Pranic Center. I'll give him a moment to reply. And if he doesn't reply, I'll choose another one from our online audience. We've got so many comments. Oh, yes, is to that locking in that uh, that beam that you sent to us. Thank you. Fabio, do we have any um, questions from the live audience here under the trees? And okay, well, he's doing that. Okay, he's doing, okay. Okay, I'll ask one from online audience again. So um, uh, let me see here. Um, we have someone who would like to know more. Oh, there you go. Jasmine, you'll be able to see um, the audience here as well now too, <laughs> gathered under the trees. So someone would like you to would like you to expand on what you mean by that the duality um, reality is a hologram. Can you make a comment about that? <laughs> you know when I, my body just went into source feeding quite spontaneously in 1993 to me it was all about just love 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 i had no idea how it happened and when i got pushed you could say onto the global stage by my ascended master friends who'd been beaming in coming to visit for me, it was like, I just thought everybody who meditated had experienced love and would get it. They'd have felt the power and the pulsation. They go, oh yeah, when I'm in love, I'm not hungry. Like when you fall in love, you often lose your habitat. It wasn't so. I realized over time, I had to try and understand the science of it, which is what I've been doing these last 30 years, understanding the construction of the human design and so much more. So what I've realized is everything expresses in a holographic manner throughout creation. Like the ascended ones, when they step into your field, they just come in a almost like a projected form that is not their essence nature. They're just vibrational energetic constructs. So the dual natured hologram is a pre-agreed reality of people who have lived far from true nature that have agreed to co-create. But there's so much more than that. It's just like a very limited movie of reality in a cinema. And over time, we all get bored with it. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I've seen that movie. What else is there? And then you start going, more, more, there's got to be more. Is Surely we can live in peace. Surely we can get along. Surely we can treat animals with kindness. Surely we can take care of basic human rights, take care of women in the world, take care of the children in the world, take air of everybody with love and make the human resource number one agenda 
in the world. And all of you have had this prayer and that begins revelation because your inner being goes, there's more. Now that you're asking, there's more. And they say, come, disengage, get off social media, get off the iPhones, get off the internet and get on the inner net. Sit down, shut up, open to the more. And then other holograms appear, other realities, which are much more enchanting. Beautiful. Thank you I have so a much. Beautiful, I, I have a beautiful girl there. What does she yes, want to ask? This is Jessica. She's arrived here at the Eden Panic Center from the Netherlands. And she's a beautiful sister of mine. Jessica, do you have a question for our beloved Jasmine? Yes, hello, yes, Jessica. Hello, Jessica. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> it's really, first of all, so beautiful to meet you and to hear you speak. You're my biggest inspiration, especially in the love, purpose, and unconditional love, spreading it in the world. Um, my question is an also about the love. I noticed in my um, chronic time that the people who are really close to me, and I am most of the time more in um, a high positive state, um, and I have people close to me who can be sometimes in a dark state, mm -hmm. and I feel that my energy when I'm with those people for a longer time, that my energy really goes down. Even if I try, like, I'm love, I'm light, I'm infinite. It's, it is a difficulty and I feel that my, my energy really goes down. And such a struggle and then I lose it, I start eating, I lose my own energy. So I really wanted to ask, and I think a lot of people around me have this issue as well. Do you have yeah. any tips what you had on your journey, how we can go back in our life to also give it to deaf people instead of maybe pleasing or going that center? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we keep it very simple and the more you use the mantras i am pure love that mantra is designed to realign molecular cellular structure to the vibration of pure love so it's like saying to the body i am pure love and the cells go that's right there's that energy vibrating through me when you use i am infinite it reminds the cellular structure and body consciousness of this infinite, vast energy ocean that's washing through it. When you say, I am eternal, you remind the cellular structure there's a mortal energy vibrating through you and it keeps you young and it keeps you vibrant and it keeps the voltage of this energy through it flowing through you strong and you do it every day. You can say I am human and I get destabilized by hanging out with people who are maybe focusing in a very different way and like for example and that can really, if you identify with that, then it's like you get fractured almost because you're looking, you're noticing energy around you, outside of you. But one of the first things I was told was stop absorbing energy. Now, you're not conscious you're absorbing energy, but most people just naturally absorb energy until you're educated as initially in the pranic path, to have a different focus you hold. The focus you hold is, I am plugged in to a never ending source of love and wisdom and power. And it vibrates through me and it vibrates out through the pores of my skin. And I'm like a little radiating sun. And all this energy that radiates out from me, it transforms everything around me that is open to transformation. 
So one, you don't become an empath or a massive less sentient that feels all the different energy because we do. And then you get to stabilize by the different influxes. So every day claiming more of pure nature through the codes, I am pure love, etc. Every day taking time out to really feel the vibration of that energy, like this pure love, when it really vibrates and rises, it's so powerful. It's almost like it, it makes you addicted and it sucks you in and anchors you into something so pure that you can be anywhere with anyone at any time. Now, one of the major initiations right now in mastery is how are you dealing with people? I recently had took a very young girl who had tried to kill herself. She'd been in a mental health institution. She was about to live on the street. And I took her into my home. And I live in a very peaceful ashram. And she came in with major post-traumatic stress disorder and an absolute shutdown regarding my reality. Didn't want to know. Was deep in victim consciousness, was deep in hate. Hated the human species. Hated everyone. Blamed everybody. And it took four months of me just creating a beautiful, peaceful sanctuary and just holding my own power. Like, who are you? Are you the daughter? Are you the friend? What role are you in the family? Or are you the queen? I am a queen. I am worthy of the greatest love. I represent the divine feminine in form. I put on my cloak of the divine feminine of all the wise ones. I'm surrounded energetically by compassion, Kuan Yin, Mother Mary, these beautiful goddesses. Their energy embraces me. There are a few times living with a really hateful person. I've never lived with a hate-filled person before there are a few times i was feeling unstable and so i just sit back i am i am human and this is hard situation i get it i've never seen somebody so wounded before and had them in my space 24 hours i am human this is hard and i just sit back and i go but i'm also divine and after a while, I started to feel when I did this, I imagined I was leaning back into this divine embrace of the goddesses, Kuan Yin, Mother Mary. And I just felt that because I was playing a mother type role, grandmother type role, then I just imagined I was being recalibrated. And all of you, if you haven't done this, get somebody to hug you from behind. But when they hug you from behind, imagine it's a divine embrace and you are being fused with us. So I would go into this each day. And then I found one day this young girl who was 17. She came energetically to me as a six year old child. And as I'm sitting in meditation, she just sat in my lap. And I felt myself embracing her and just saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. The divinity I am, the goddess I am, the queen that I am. I know you felt your first wounds at six years old. I know you became fractured then and you've been fractured since, but I love you. And I did this every day for about two months. And finally, after four months of living with me, she let all the anger go. Now we couldn't speak about paradigms. She'd say, Nan, your fridge is always empty. And I'd go, yeah, so we have to go shopping for things you want to eat. She goes, but you don't eat, what's going on? And there was something she was interested in, but most not. To talk to her about the law of love, didn't want to know. 
The law of love says, and this is the most powerful universal law of all, and it says there is an energy within us flowing through us that is so pure and so perfect that when it runs through us and out from us, it has the ability to transform everything within you and around you back to a state of divine perfection. Oh, love that law. So what if you sit in meditation, put on your queen goddess cloak, ask for an infusion from the divine feminine that's always been on earth and whose presence is so strong now because we need to rebalance patriarchal society. So you see your ascension cloak, your goddess cloak, the queen you are, one by one, take the difficult members of your family and stick them on your lap, shut up, and just, I love you, 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 I love you. You will change the energetic pattern between you. No words, no dogma. Because what we find is words create so much division in our world because everybody has such a different mental framework and model of reality of interpretation. But love, the law of love, transcends and heals and revitalizes. So there'll be sometimes you step deep into the family matrix and you've got to step out and go, oh, I need a hug. <laughs> Imagine, you know, the divine you just embracing you and loving you because Sometimes it's really hard being human. You go back to the family matrix and you're a five-year-old kid again. You know, my, my oldest sister is 74. I'm 66. She still treats me like I'm about seven years old. It's really funny. <laughs> and I just sit there and just think to myself, I love you, I love you, I love you, sister. I love you, I love you, I love you. I just decide I want to love everybody in the understanding that they too are my own pure essence vibrating in a different form, experiencing a different reality. And if you can feel and see that everybody is your own pure essence nature, choosing to vibrate in a different form, in a different reality, then there's no room for judgment. Why would you judge your own pure essence and the, its choice of expression? There is your pure nature, which is I am love. I am pure love. I am eternal. I am infinite. Vibrating in everyone, in everything, in all life, including your mum, including your dad, including an older or younger sister, including a lover who is pushing all those buttons. Okay. But do we have to be affected or can we just recognize what the Indians call the lila, the play of it all? Everything's just vibrational constructs rising and falling. I don't have to identify with man-made duality constructs. I've enjoyed for a long time, but I don't want to play there anymore. I like the zone of unity. I like this. And see, when you go in, to I am pure love, I am infinite, I am eternal. This part of you gets stronger and stronger and stronger and its vibrational pattern begins to screen out from your field anything that doesn't match that and you find yourself living in what you would feel to be heaven on earth. Start with gratitude. Just think, wow, what gifts do my family give me? They give me the gift to understand I need to be in radiation and not absorption mode. They give me the opportunity to embrace myself with a goddess cloak of endless love when I'm feeling a bit unstable. They give me the ability to see their pain. They give me the ability to know that everybody who is in anger or pain or hate, they just need love they're just crying out for love and so you just see them in their etheric form as a child needing love sit them on your lap and you just from your heart not human heart because it gets a bit limited 
at your divine heart. Go, I, the divine I that I am, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And you know, we have done massive experiments all around the world for years. I've done it in China to thousands of people and I've had them sit there and just say, I love you, I love you, I love you. First, your body, I, the divine I that lives in this body, human form in which I live. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Then to family, family, I, the divine I who lives in this human form, I embrace you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Out to friends, community in which I dwell as an essence being in this form. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Every human being in this world, I, the essence who dwells in this human form, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And then magic happens because as you vibrate this love out, you set up a biofeedback loop where everybody open to love feels it and vibrates it back. Now you're in mutual feeding. That's source feeding. Not this, whether you take physical food or not, it's you being dissolved into the purest frequency you can step back into and then allowing it to just circle out from you around the world. And then it comes back. Then you take it off planet and then it comes back off planet from all the other realms. There are beings of pure love. We have thank long answers to questions. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jez Mahin. And you just ended at exactly 11.11 here, local time. <laughs> I don't know if that means anything at all, but it's quite beautiful. Yeah. I think that I'm being told to wrap it up. We do have more mm -hmm. questions from people yeah. online and in person, but I'm being told that we've used our hour yeah. now. So thank you so much for your sharing. And um, I feel like you just brought a beautiful radiating diamond and placed it in all of our hearts. So <laughs> I'm, I'm being asked for one question more. Let me just get my permission that we can do one more. Are you open to one more question? Yeah, Does mean? Okay, thank you. Okay. okay, so I have to stick to our schedule. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I would, I would recommend anyone else who has um, more questions to really um, go to your website and to, um, Fabio, I need to mute. We have no more questions. We're not doing any more questions. Thank you. Please mute. No, I'm, I'm being told to wrap it up. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I'm being told to wrap it up. Yes. Thank you. And look, let, let me just finish for all of those with you with questions. Sit still in meditation, go direct and work with the intelligence and the field. If something's there for you to know, you'll get the answer. Exactly. Thank you so much, Jasmine Heen, for radiating all of your um, beauty and wisdom and joy and vibrancy of, of, of who you are and all of your experiences to all of us here and all of those around the world listening. Uh, great appreciation and gratitude from myself and all of those working hard here at the Eden Pranic Center for the Pranic World Festival. Great blessings to have you join us again this year. Thank you so much. Thank you.